Today, I'm going to be giving you a few option strategies that you can start with just $100 and make up to 30% profits per day. But just a disclaimer, you're probably not going to make money every single day unless you're Nostradamus, but I've used these strategies myself and I've made over 80% profit since the beginning of this year. The first strategy and probably the best strategy out there for small accounts is going to be what's known as a vertical spread. This is where you're going to buy a call option and sell a call option with the same expiration date or buy a put option and sell a put option with the same expiration date. So keep in mind that we need to keep the same expiration date whenever we buy this call and we sell another call or if we buy a put and sell a put. If you set a different expiration date, then that is gonna be known as a calendar spread, which is an entirely different video. But we're gonna start out by buying a call option and selling a call option with the same expiration or buying a put option and selling a put option with the same expiration. And the way that we're gonna choose our strike price is by pulling out our crystal ball and saying what price that the stock is going to be either above or below by the end of the day. Okay, if you're Warren Buffett or if you're Jimmy Buffett, nobody knows if the stock is gonna go up, down, sideways, or in f***ing circles. No, you don't actually need a crystal ball. You can choose your strike prices based on sentiment. So with the stock market, you have bullish sentiment where you think the stock will go up. You have bearish sentiment where you think the stock will go down. And you have neutral sentiment where you think the stock will trade flat. Or you can call that slothish sentiment. So if you think that the stock market is going to be bullish, if you think that it's going to go up, the best strategy that you can use for this is what's known as a call debit spread. So with a call debit spread, you're going to buy a call option and sell a call option with the same expiration date. And the strike prices that you choose is gonna depend on where you think the stock is going to be trading above by the end of the day. So for example, if I think that SPY is going to be above $384 by the end of today, which is December 19th, I'm going to buy a $383 call. So one strike price below my 384 target. And then I'm going to sell that $384 call or the strike price that I think SPY is going to be above. And whenever I open this option, I'm gonna be paying $17. And since I'm paying $17 in order to open this option, that is the most amount of money that I can lose with this particular spread option. So that is my max loss at $17 is all I can lose for this trade. But there's a lot more upside potential for this trade because I'm buying it so cheap. And the max profit that I can make for this trade is gonna be the difference between the strike prices. So 384 minus 383, which is $1. And we subtract the 17 cents that we're paying in order to open this option. So the max profit that I can make for this trade is $83. So the max profit for a call debit spread is the difference between the strike prices minus the cost and then your max loss is going to be whatever you pay in order to open your call debit spread. But chances are your profit or loss is gonna be somewhere in between this. You're probably not gonna make $83 and you're probably not gonna lose the full $17. And the way that I determine how much money I'm going to either make or lose is based on probability. So I set an estimate in my head of what is the likelihood of this trade working out. So if I think that there's say a 30% chance of this trade working out, then I'm going to try to close it at 30% of the spread width of $1. So I'm gonna to try to sell this option for 30 cents. 60% of the time, it works every time. And in order to close this, I'm going to buy the $384 call that I sold, and then I'm gonna sell the 383 call that I bought. So the opposite to how I opened it. But let's say that I think that there's only a 10% chance now that this trade is going to work out. Now, based on this estimate, I would close this at 10 cents each or 10% of the spread width of $1. And in this case, I'd be taking on a $7 loss. And at this point, the stock market is probably bearish if there's only a 10% chance of this trade working out where I thought that it was bullish. And if you're bearish on the stock market, then you could use a put debit spread. 
So just like with the call debit spread, we're going to buy a put option and we're going to sell a put option. We're going to buy a strike price that's above where we think the stock is going to be. And then we're going to sell the strike price that we think the stock is going to be below. So we're bearish and we're assuming the stock is going to be below our lower strike price, the one that we're selling whenever we open the spread option. So for example, if I think that SPY is going to be below $380, I'm going to open a 381, 380 SPY put debit spread that's expiring at the end of today. Right now, this trade is going for around 31 cents. So that's how much I'm paying in order to open this option. And that is my max loss if SPY is above my $381 strike price by the end of the day. And then my max profit is going to be the difference between the strike prices, $1 minus the 31 cents that I'm paying to open this. So my max profit for this put debit spread is 69 cents. So the max profit is the difference between the strike prices minus your cost for a put debit spread. And your max loss is going to be whatever you pay in order to open your debit spread. But again, chances are you're probably gonna close somewhere in between your max profit and your max loss. And a little tip that I wanna give to you for spread options is Whenever the stock hits the strike price that you bought for your spread, it's gonna be trading for around 40 cents. So I bought this at 31 cents, and if SPY hits $381 sometime by the end of today, these spreads are gonna be going for around 40 cents each. So that means that I'm gonna make around $9 in profit per spread for about a 29% profit. And if SPY sinks all the way down to $380, or the strike price that I sold for this put debit spread, then these options are going to be going for 60 cents each. So I bought them at 31, and if it hits $380 by the end of the day, these spreads are gonna be going for around $60, so I would have nearly doubled my money. But sometimes stocks don't go up or down. Sometimes they're slothish. Sometimes they just trade flat. And in this case, it's best to use credit spreads instead of a debit spread. This is another form of a vertical spread, but instead of paying in order to open this option, somebody is going to pay you a credit, hence the name, credit spread, in order to open these spread options. And it's the same strategy as we were using before, buying a call, selling a call, or buying a put and selling a put. And whether we choose a call or a put is going to be based on which direction we think the stock is going to trade. So we're assuming that the stock market is going to be flat, but we also want to assign either a bearish or a bullish sentiment to that. So if you're bearish to neutral for a stock, then you're going to use a call credit spread. And the way that you're going to set this up is you're going to sell a strike price that you think the stock is going to stay below and then buy a call option with a higher strike price. So for example, if I think that SPY is going to be below $382 today, I'm going to sell the $382 call and then buy a $383 call that's expiring today. And for this trade, I'm going to get around 25 cents of credit. And the credit that I get whenever I open a credit spread is going to be my max profit. That credit is all that I can make out of this trade. But with this trade and because I'm getting such a low credit, my max loss is going to be a lot higher. And this is the drawback of using credit spreads. And the max loss for this trade is going to be the difference between the strike prices, $1, minus the $0.25 cents in credit that I'm receiving for a max loss of $75 per spread that I open. So this means that I'm taking on a 75 to 25 or a 3 to 1 risk reward ratio. This is definitely not the best strategy whenever it comes to risk reward, but it is more likely that a stock is either going to trade flat or come down rather than just going up. So you're choosing two directions that a stock could trade instead of just one direction, hence the higher risk reward ratio. But maybe SPY isn't likely to be bearish at all. Maybe it's actually going to be bullish to neutral today. And if you're bullish to neutral for a stock, then you're going to use a put credit spread. And the way that you're going to set this up is you're going to sell a put option at a strike price you think the stock is going to stay above, that it's currently above, and then you're going to buy a lower strike price. So for example, if I think that SPY is going to stay above $380 today, I'm going to sell a $380 put 
and I'm going to buy a $379 put. And for this trade, I'm going to get up to 31 cents in credit. So the 31 cents in credit that I'm getting for this credit spread is the most amount of money that I can make. Again, the credit is your max profit whenever it comes to a credit spread, and the max loss is the difference between the strike prices minus the credit that you receive. So if SPY ends up dumping below $379 by the end of today, then I'm going to lose $69. But if it stays above $380, then I'm going to make my max profit, which is going to be $31. But you're likely going to take profits or cut losses somewhere in between there. And these spread options work very similar to debit spreads in their pricing. But if the stock is trading at the strike price that you sold for your credit spread, then it's going to be going for 40 cents. Whereas if it's trading at the strike price that you bought for your credit spread, then it's going to be trading around 60 cents on the expiration date. So let's say that SPY goes down to $380 sometime by the end of today. I sold this originally for 31 cents and I'd be buying it back for 40 cents, which means that I would be taking on a $9 loss for this trade or about 31% loss. And if SPY ends up dumping all the way down to $379 sometime by the end of today, then these spreads are going for 60 cents when I sold them originally for 31 cents, which means that I'd be taking on a 93% loss. And the losses for a credit spread can actually go above 100% because if the spread ends up going to say 90 cents each, then I'd be buying it for 90 cents when I originally sold it for 31 cents. So that would nearly be a 200% loss. But the great thing about spread options is that you have a defined risk. You can only lose what you put in. You can only lose your max loss. So for this trade, I can only lose $69. And that's how vertical spreads work. But if you don't have level three options, then you could do out of the money calls and out of the money puts, which is really great for small accounts. Buying an out of the money option is going to be a lot cheaper than buying an in the money option. Duh because an in the money option is going to have intrinsic value, which means that you can exercise that option and make a profit by buying or selling the 100 shares on the open market. Whereas an out of the money option, there is no intrinsic value to it. And an out of the money option is also gonna be cheaper than an at the money strike price or one that's right at the current market value of the stock. And the reason for that is because an at the money option is going to have the greatest amount of extrinsic value. And the further that you go in the money or the further that you go out of the money, the less extrinsic value that option is going to have. So an in the money option is gonna be more expensive because of the intrinsic value. An at the money option is going to be more expensive because of the extrinsic value. And an out of the money option is going to be the cheapest type of option which makes it great for small accounts. And the deeper out of the money that you go whenever you buy an out of the money option, the cheaper your option is going to get. But you don't wanna choose a strike price that's super unrealistic. You want to set your strike price based on the break even for the trade. So let's take this $384 out of the money call, for example. Right now, this option is going for $2.18. So we're gonna take that 218 that we're paying for the option. We're going to add that to the $384 strike price. And our break even for this out of the money call is $386.18. So as long as SPY is above $386.18 by this Friday the 23rd, then I'm going to be at a profit for this trade. But if it's below $386.18 or below my break-even price, then I'm gonna be at a loss. And if this option expires out of the money, then I'm going to lose what I pay into this trade. So I'm gonna lose the $218 that this trade cost me. But the max profit for an out of the money call option is unlimited because SPY can go up to infinity. To infinity and beyond. Let's say that SPY ends up going to $420 by the end of this week. We're going to subtract $420 minus our $384 strike price. And this option would have $3,600 of intrinsic value. We bought this for $218 and it would be worth $3,600. But if SPY ends up going to $420 by the end of this week, I think the markets are a little bit high. Maybe I'm bearish on the stock market though for the end of this week. In that case, 
I will be buying an out of the money put option. So let's take this $377 put, for example. This is an out of the money put. So we're gonna subtract the 169 that we're paying in order to open this option. That's gonna be our max loss, minus the $377 strike price. And our break even for this trade is gonna be $375.31. That means if SPY is below $375.31, and I'm gonna be at a profit for this trade, but if it's above my break even of $375.31, then I'm going to be at a loss and I'm going to lose the full $169 that I paid for this trade if SPY is above the $377 strike price or if this option expires out of the money. But the potential profit for this trade is going to be equal to the strike price multiplied by 100 minus what we're paying in order to open this option. So we can make over $37,000 for this $169 put option, but that's if SPY goes all the way to zero by the end of the week. And if SPY ends up at zero by the end of this week, I think we have bigger things to worry about. But those are all the strategies that I've got for you if you're starting out with a small account. Hopefully this video was useful. If it was, show some love, leave a like. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video and thank you to all my patrons for the support. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Baby, lock the door and turn the lights down low.